All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro and na-miss ko po kayong lahat na na-miss natin ang maging uh, live no every time that we are having our discussion for our let items no. So again, tonight is the first time that we are going live in the beautiful Philippine Islands. So, so first time po nating mag-live ngayon sa ating own country. We are already back in the Philippines and of course we are going live tonight for the discussion of our general education items. Now, again, we would like to welcome, of course, the members of Team Piaché. Again, there are so ben many benefits of becoming a member of Team Piaché. If you are a member, you can answer our quizzes. You can download all the materials that we have, kahit po yung mga luma namin materials and mga dati natin materials ng uh, last year pa na materials na nandun po lahat from September of 2021 until tonight's discussion nandun po lahat sa ating Team Piaché. And of course, you can watch the full-length video of course, of course, again, yung video po natin dyan sa YouTube and of course uh, sa ating Facebook page ay snippet po lamang napuputol po yung ating video. So again, if you can, please do become a member of Team Piaché. You are going to reap all the benefits of becoming a member of Team Piaché and we are of course going to help you pass your licensure exam for teachers. Now, tonight we are going to be discussing 20 items of general education. These were all part of your diagnostic test for Gen Ed. And of course, before we proceed, uh, let us also have this this uh, announcement. No, we are going to open our new team, our newest team, which is Team Bruner. Ito po yung magiging let review group natin for our new TOS. No, so ito ay magiging uh, team natin for the 2022 graduates, and of course, these are going to be the let takers ng March 2023. So you, if you are going to take the let in March of 2023. Please do become a member of Team Bruner. Again, just watch out for our announcements. Mag-a-announce po kami kung paano po kayo magiging member ng Team Bruner. So again, as I have mentioned, tonight we are going to discuss general education. This is 20 items, all part of your diagnostic test. And of course, all these are going to be um, the materials that we have tonight. No, Mag-download po ng, ng members ng ating Team Piaché. Now again, please do like this video, share this video. Of course, start a watch party. You can also support us by sending us stars on Facebook page and also by sending us your super super chat super stickers on YouTube. But of course, before we start with anything else, let's all have our prayer. Samahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to ask you for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learn. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that it, I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, so once again, as I've mentioned, this is general education, 20 items, all part of your Gen Ed Diagnostic Test. Yung winner po sa ating Diagnostic Test, of course, the first placer will be receiving 10,000 pesos in cash, okay? So again, if you are the winner, abangan po yan, no? your announcement, our announcement will be this Friday. No? So this coming Friday po, I am still trying to check all your scores. Of course, nandun po yung rules natin, yung ating guidelines. Hindi po po pwedeng mag-answer kayo several times, dapat once lang and dapat a complete name, no full name po, hindi po alias, hindi po pangalan ng, ng vlog or vlog ninyo yung nakasulat no, sa ating quizzes. So again, the announcement of our first player, placer, which is going to uh, receive 10,000 pesos, will be this coming Friday. Again, please do like this video, okay? start a watch party, heart this video, share this video, of course, para mas marami pa po tayong matulungan. Now, as I am waiting for you to like this video, para po makapag-start na tayo, uh, let me just acknowledge our star senders. Maraming salamat sa ating star senders. Sir Daniel Santarin, maraming maraming salamat po. Sir Earl Jean or Ma'am Earl Jean Chico Ceron. Uh, Ma'am Zaira La Chica Subiron Nasi, maraming salamat. Ma'am Some Hearts Are Diamond. Ang ganda ng pangalan. Ma'am Linda, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Richelle G. Villabeles, thank you so much for the stars. Ma'am Lynn Feje Noirok, maraming salamat. Ma'am Emma Fernandez. Ma'am Tin Colinares, thank you po. Ma'am Mary Lubugos Gule, maraming salamat. Ma'am I'm E.M. Ma'am Carla, thank you po. Ma'am Jeline Alba Okino, 
Maraming salamat, Ma'am Yulaisa Orozco Loren. Thank you. Ma'am Adirin Kanda, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Ma Jing Marahay Malinaw, Ma'am Els Orfiano Olermo. Thank you so much. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga star senders. Babalikan ko po yung uh, iba pa nating star senders later. Again, please do like this video, share this video, start a watch party, send us your stars, and send us your super chat super stickers. We start with question number one. Again, this is general education. Okay, number one. This is English. Which illustrates the proper use of comma? Is it letter A? When you call and need someone, Romel will come. Letter B. When you call and need someone, Romel will come. Letter C. When you call and need someone, Romel will come. Letter D. When you call and need someone, Romel will come. Okay, which do you think is the correct choice for question number one? Again, this is English. Okay, now again, pag meron pong interruption, no, baka po pag meron round out, of course, we are already in the Philippines, no, pag uh, nagkaroon po ng disruption sa ating power, no, or meron pong lag sa ating internet connection, of course, we are going to come back. Okay, so maghintay lamang po kayo pag meron pong interruption sa ating uh, signal. And then, of course, um, some of you may know that I have given birth uh, less than two months ago. So, meron po akong baby na two months. And so, pag meron po kayong narinig na umiiyak, hindi po, niya, hindi po yan guni-guni ninyo lamang. Hindi rin po yan chanak, no? Anak ko po yan. Okay? That's my baby. My my almost two months old baby. So, again, nanganak po ako almost two months ago. So, pag may umiyak po, Okay, hopefully, tumahan ka agad, no? Anak ko po yan. Hindi po yan guni-guni. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's for question number one. Letter A's. Okay, now, meron mga question dito. Paano po ba mag-join sa Team Peche? Mag-send lamang po kayo ng message sa ating Facebook page. Kung nag-send na po kayo at wala po pong reply, hintayin nyo lamang po, no? Sometimes kasi, eh, out of office hours na yung inyong message. So, balikan lamang po. Nagbabuffer ba? Okay, sabi ni Sir Buffering. Maraming salamat, Ma'am MJ Katubay. Sabi niya, congrats sa baby. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so number one, which illustrates the proper use of comma? And of course, this is very easy, no? Elementary level. Ang ating correct choice dito, of course, is letter A. When you call and need someone, comma, Romel will come. Okay, so letter A is the correct choice for number one. Sa mga nakakuha ng correct choice, congratulations. And of course, sa mga ligwak naman, better luck next time. Okay lang po yan. Meron po po tayong 19 items. No? So our passing score is 12 items. But of course, if you are not a member of Team Piaché, napuputol po yung ating video again sa ating Facebook page at sa ating YouTube channel. So magpa-member po kayo sa Team Piaché. Just send a message to our Facebook page. All right, we proceed with question number two. Okay, this is still English, and this is one of the idioms that you'd usually see in your licensure exam for teachers. Number two, I was simply making a tongue-in-cheek remark. I didn't mean to offend her. The underlined idiom means blank. Is it letter A? Impossible. Letter B, joke. Letter C, lie. Or letter D, sketch. Okay, what is your choice for question number two? Sir Arthur, again, mag-send lamang po ng message sa ating Facebook page on how you can become a member of Team Piaché. Again, please do like and share this video. Pakishare po ng ating video na para po mas marami pa tayong matulungan, mas marami pa tayong ma-reach out ng mga students, maging kaguro, and of course, maging licensed professional teachers in the future. Okay, so letter B. I see a lot of letter Bs sa ating comment box. Team YouTube and Team Facebook, ganun din ang Team Piaché. You're all answering letter B, and of course, letter B is tumpak for number two, okay? So the meaning of the term or the meaning of the idiom, tongue-in-cheek, is insincere, ironic, or joking, okay? So it's just a joke. It's just a joke, okay? So it's not something that you have to take seriously. Now, when you say tongue-in-cheek remark, it is something that is just a joke, okay? So it's not impossible, not a line, not a sketch. Letter B po yung ating hinahanap. Okay, so you have your example here. And made a tongue-in-cheek remark to John and he got mad because he thought she was serious. So again, when you say tongue-in-cheek remark, 
it is just a joke. Okay, so letter B, ang ating compact na choice. Again, if you are a member of Team Piaché, you can download our materials later. So itong PowerPoint presentation po natin ay nada-download. Okay, so nada-download po ito later. All right, now we proceed with question number three. Still English, every woman, man, or child blank the right to live. Is it letter A, have, letter B, has, letter C, had, or letter D, do have? Ma'am Rica Bell Crisostomo from Jensen. Good evening po sa lahat ng mga taga Jensen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a lot of letter Bs sa ating comment box. Kung pa kaya ang letter B, we will find out. Okay. Now, let me continue reading some of the names ng ating mga star senders. Ma'am Maria Cristina Ruamar, thank you. Ma'am Ange Singson, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Krishna Feb Alaya Ay Cantona, thank you. Ma'am Harin Casal, Ma'am Joanne, thank you po. Maraming salamat again to all our star senders at sa ating mga uh, super chatters, no? super sticker senders naman sa YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ay, meron ako nakitang si Palay nandyan kami this coming weekend. Sana magkita tayo. Ay, Silay pala. Hindi pala kami si Palay. Pupunta kami ng Silay. Okay, letter B for question number three. Every woman, man, or child. Now, you have to remember that whenever you have or, it is usually taken, no? It is taken as singular, okay? So, singular po yung or, no? You have your your term or your your word or here. And of course, the correct term, the correct verb, the, the linking verb or the modal that you are going to use, now the helping verb that you should use is letter B has. Okay, so has ang ating tumpak na choice for number three. Okay, maraming salamat and congratulations, of course, for those who got the correct choice for number three. Now, so that's letter B has. So ating mga first timers, maraming salamat na welcome po. Diretso sa kusina, meron pa po tayong lechon doon. Okay, so, and of course, ganun din sa ating mga team thunder, sa ating mga veterans. Welcome, welcome, good evening. Okay, number four, this is still English, no? This is literature. And uh, this is also part of idiom, idiom din pala to. Okay, so number four, Edgar Allan Poe feels like a fish out of water upon arriving in a foreign land. The italicized phrase means letter A, one who is outside his usual environment. Letter B, a fish that was taken out of the sea. Letter C, one who feels that he or she is not needed. Or letter D, one who feels that he or she is not well appreciated. Okay, what do you think is the correct choice? What's the meaning of the idiom like a fish out of water? Like a fish out of water. Okay, ano po yung inyong choice? Sir Jana Michael, maraming salamat for the stars. Ma'am Angeli Apeliado, thank you po. Thank you so much to all our star senders. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for question number four? Still English. Okay, medyo walang math tonight, no? Walang masyadong math. Again, thank you po sa ating mga star senders. Kung makaligtaan po yung inyong pangalan, sorry po, no? But of course, we greatly appreciate your stars. Sir Kiefer Estefan, maraming salamat. Ma'am Jing Lumpas, Sir Perlim, Layang Lintang, maraming salamat. Ma'am RJ, D. Makiling, thank you po. Okay, now I see a lot of D's and A's. So, meron ding ilang letters C. A, D, and C. Okay, ano kaya yung tumpak na choice? Again, our idiom is like a fish out of water. Okay, now a lot of you are also choosing letter D, no? So again, your choices here is letter A, one who is, the first one is one who is outside his usual environment. Letter B, a fish that was taken out of the sea. Letter C, one who feels that he or she is not needed. Or letter D, one who feels that he or she is not well appreciated. Okay, the tumpak na choice natin dito is letter A. Now, when you say like a fish out of water, you are outside your usual environment. You are outside your comfort zone. Okay, so outside of your comfort zone ka. Okay, so this is the meaning of the idiom like a fish out of water. A fish out of water, a person who is uncomfortable in an unfamiliar situation. Okay, so your example here, 
I felt like a fish out of water in this town, okay? If you are outside your, your comfort zone, then you'd feel like a fish out of water, okay? So our tumpak na choice is letter A, hindi po not well appreciated, halos magkapareha sila ng letter C, no, not needed. Siguro po ay meron kayong pinagdadaanan. Kaya nakaka-relate kayo sa C or D. Ang ating pong tumpak na choice dito ay letter letter A, okay? So letter A, ang ating tumpak na choice for number four. We move on. With question number five, still English. Emily Dickens is known for her candor about some issues on poetic freedom. The word candor means letter A, appeal, letter B, frankness, letter C, opinions, letter D, tact. Okay, what's your choice for number five? Okay, ano kaya yung tumpak na choice for number five? Again, all the items that we are discussing, these are the items that really come out in the let. No? So dito po siguro ng Pinoy, nakakasiguro kayo that we are hitting the targets kung ano yung ating mga uh, yung ating mga items dito. Ito talaga yung lumalabas sa let. No? So dito na po kayo pumasok sa gurong Pinoy. Huwag na po kung saan-saan. Baka po malos pa kayo, na mawala pa kayo, maligaw pa kayo, na baka mali yung, yung inyong maging sagot or baka iba yung pinag-aaralan nyo, hindi naman lumalabas sa let. Okay? So, ito po, siguradong-sigurado kayo lumalabas sa let. And of course, you can vouch that our answers are correct. Okay? Letter B and C. Yan ang inyong choices for number five. B and C. Okay, so again, your, your uh, sentence here is, Emily Dickens is known for her candor about some issues on poetic freedom. Ano kaya yung ibig sabihin ng term na candor? Is it letter A, appeal? Okay, known for her appeal about some issues on poetic freedom. Known for her frankness about issues on poetic freedom. Known for her for her opinions. Okay, or letter D, known for her tact. Okay, ang tumpak na choice natin dito is letter B. That's frankness. So, prang ka siya, no? That's the meaning of the term candor. Okay, so candor again, that means frankness. And so the tumpak na choice is letter B, hindi po letter C. So sa mga nag, sa mga sumagot na letter C, naligwak na 'yon, okay lang po 'yan at least sa ating pong actual na let, no? If you are if you will be taking the let in September, eh, tama na po yung inyong magiging sagot. So again, candor means frankness, pranka siya. No? So pranka, frankness or candor, that we that is our choice. Letter B for number 5. Okay, so here you have the meaning of the term candor again, the quality of being open and honest in expression. Synonyms are frankness, candidness, bluntness, telling it like it is. Your antonym would be guardedness. Okay, so tact, letter D mo, is the antonym, no? So tactful siya. Uh, yung, yung candor naman, hindi naman siya pagiging taklesa. Yung taklesa kasi may negative na siyang connotation, na meron na siyang negative na meaning. When you are frank, you just tell it as it is. Wala kang preno, wala kang filter, kumbaga. Okay, so number number five po is letter B. Frankness, ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, number six. This is still English. Ang maraming English items tonight. Now, my love is like a red, red rose. It's an example of A or N, letter A, sinekduke. Letter B, metaphor. Letter C, metonymy. Or letter D, simile. Okay, what's your choice for question number six? Number six, ano po ang inyong choice? Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for number six? Again, please put your answers in our comment box. Send us your stars if you can. Send us your super chat, super stickers if you can. Maraming salamat again to all our star, uh, star senders, no? super sticker senders. And again, napaka-importante that you like, love, and share this video. Napaka-importante po. Yun naman walang bayad, no? sharing our video. Wala pong bayad. And of course, malaking tulong iyon para mas marami tayong matulungang uh, maging licensed professional teachers. Okay, what's your choice? We are already at number six. So again, if you are watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, napuputol po yung inyong, uh, vid yung inyong video no? sa so magpamember po kayo sa Team Pache para po dire-diretso yung ating panunod. Okay, while well, waiting for the rest of your answers, let me just say thank you to all our senders, Sir Walid A. Duruan, maraming salamat, Ma'am Catherine Abhelina, thank you, Sir Dominic Tagiam, thank you. Uh, uh, Ma'am Marie Rignon Infiel, maraming salamat po. Sir, or Ma'am Akisha Val, Sir Gab Paqueros, thank you. Uh, Ma'am Aligado I, thank you. Sir Gles Andrea Avila, maraming salamat. Ma'am Lani Tabano Montecalvo, Montecalvo, maraming salamat po. 
Ma'am Aragasi Ashlima, maraming maraming salamat. Assalamu alaikum again sa ating mga Muslim brothers. Okay, now I see a lot of letter Ds. Ito naman ay napaka-easy, no? Na sobrang dali lang naman ang ating uh, item, no? So, um, elementary level na to. Okay, so again, your question is, my love is like a red, red rose. This is an example of correct choice, of course, should be letter D, simile. Okay, so letter D po, simile ang ating tumpak na choice. Now, simile and metaphor, yung B and D mo, halos magkaparehas, no? So, uh, they're very similar. We are going to discuss their differences, no, in a few minutes sa ating next slide. Sinekduke and metonymy, ganun din, maraming nako-confuse. Now, what is the difference? between these two terms okay so again the first thing that we have here the first two things that we have are the terms simile and metaphor what's the difference now both of them compare two different things parehas po sila ng um, function they would compare two different things yung pagkakaiba is that your simile uses the term like and as while your metaphor does not use the terms like and as. No? So, um, hindi siya gumagamit ng like and as. That's your metaphor. Pero yung simile mo, may terms na like and as. So, examples mo for your simile, he was as quiet as a mouse. And uh, second example, she swam like a fish. So, again, if there are terms as and uh, like, meron po siyang as would be your simile. Now, metaphor here, alley is a walking dictionary. Alley is like a walking dictionary. Or time is like money. Time is money. Okay? So, wala po siyang terms na like and as. And so, we say this is metaphor. Okay? So, yan po yung pagkakaiba ng ating simile and metaphor. So, again, if you are a member of Team Piaché, you can easily download my PowerPoint presentation later. No, hindi nyo po kailangan mag-take down ng notes or mag-take down screenshots. Okay, now what about your synecdoche and metonymy? Halos magkaparehas din itong synecdoche and metonymy. They'd also compare uh, two things, no? The difference is that your synecdoche uses a part of a whole or vice versa. Po, pwede pong part to a whole or whole to a part. Okay, so um, your scene, scene here sa ating um, explanation dito, no? Sa bibi lamang po, sa ating explanation dito. Scene here is synecdoche. And it usually is using a part of a whole or po pwede din namang whole to a part, no vice versa. Your metonymy on the other, the other hand would only use a related term, okay? So yung hint po ninyo, my sin, sinekduke, is part of me, while my mom, metonymy, is related to me. Metonymy uses a related word, no? Hindi siya uh, parte ng whole or vice versa, hindi siya uh, whole to a part. Part. Okay, so your example here, sinekduke, busy hands worked in the kitchen. Of course, when you say hands, this would be part of the people who are working in the kitchen. Metonymy, on the other hand, your example here is the pen is mightier, mightier than the sword. The pen is mightier than the sword. The pen here, of course, would stand for your author, those who write. And the sword, of course, would stand for your warriors, no, or your soldiers, those who fight. Okay, so again, my sin is part of me. Sinekduke uses a part of the whole or vice versa. While metonymy uses a related word. So my mom is related to me. Yan po yung ating hint. But then again, your uh, tumpak na choice for number six is letter D. That's simile. Okay, we move on with question number seven. Jose Rizal's novels, Noli Mitangere and El Filibusterismo, are inspired by a novel of Harriet Beecher Stowe entitled Letter A, Le Miserable, Letter B, War and Peace, Letter C, Uncle Tom's Cabin, or Letter D, An Allegory. Okay, what's your choice for number seven? Ma'am Mary Joyce Pineda Akula, maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Juday Bedo, thank you. Ma'am Feli Rose, thank you. Ma'am Sheena Sebia Rayos, maraming salamat. Ma'am Carla Dalangin Baldo, thank you po for your stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Nina Labris Ferrer. Sir Emerson Lambino, maraming salamat. Ma'am Nail Faith Cecilio Lozares, thank you so much. Ma'am Aprilin Bargumento, maraming salamat. Ma'am Marjorie Mendoza, thank you. Sir Herwin Turla, maraming maraming salamat. Um... Uh, Ma'am Arlenz, thank you. Ma'am Shaidel Salinas Paragas, thank you po for your stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Harty Ebanosar Nopia, thank you, thank you po. Okay, number seven, I see a lot of letter C's. May ilang B. Okay. 
letter C, karamihang choice niyo for number seven. Is Hogan going back to number seven? Jose Rizal's novels, Noli Mitangere and El Filibusterismo, are inspired by a novel of Harriet Beecher Stowe entitled, the correct choice, of course, is letter C, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Okay, so letter C is Tumpak. Let's take a look at our explanation. Okay, so here is a slide explaining Uncle Tom's Cabin. The author, of course, is Harriet Beecher Stowe. It is a forceful uh, protest against slavery. The goal of producing outrage in readers against the institution is accomplished by telling the story of a noble enslaved man who was named Uncle Tom, who is wrenched from his family and ultimately killed by a cruel master. Okay, so halos magkaparehas po yung uh, story ng Uncle Tom's Cabin and ng ating nolimitangre at el filibusterismo na paglalapastangan Sa, sa isang tao. No? So this one is about slavery. Ito po yung naging um, parang naging patnubay, no? naging inspirasyon ni Jose Rizal sa pagsulat na kanyang mga nobela. Okay? So that's Uncle Tom's Cabin. That is our answer. No? Now what about the rest of our choices? Le Mesira was about um, the person who was called Jean Valjean who begins as a victim of an unjust society and evolved into an angry outlaw and is transformed into a Christ-like figure of compassion through the love of a kindly bishop and an orphan child. This, of course, was written by Victor Hugo. Okay, so Victor Hugo for Les Miserables. Now, next one, we have War and Peace. This was written by Leo Tolstoy. War and Peace brings to life early 19th century Russia and its people, those who battled the French invaders and were instrumental in crushing Napoleon's dream of world dominance. Okay, so this is uh, war and peace. Now, lastly, allegory. When you say allegory, this is a story in which the characters represent abstract qualities or ideas. For example, in Westerns, when you say sheriff, this would represent the good and the outlaw would represent evil. Okay, so ito naman yung ibig sabihin ng term na allegory, a story in which the characters represent abstract qualities or ideas. But of course, we were looking for Uncle Tom's Cabin. Okay, so Uncle Tom's Cabin, yung atin pong choice for uh, this item. Okay, we move on with question number eight. Okay, this is still English. A basic reading skill that enables a student to relate a particular symbol to a certain sound. Is this vocabulary, letter A, letter B, fluency, letter C, phonics, or letter D, syntax? Okay, ano kaya ang tumpak na choice? Ano yung hinahanap natin dito? A basic reading skill that enables a student to relate a particular symbol to a certain sound. Your hint there would be the term sound. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's for number 8. Okay, letter C, phonics. Phonics kaya ang tumpak na choice for number 8. Okay. Again, I see a lot of letter C's. Huwag na natin patagalin, ka, patagalin pa, no? Of course, Letter C ang ating hinahanap. No? So a basic reading skill that enables a student to relate a particular symbol to a certain sound. Again, your hint is a term sound, is the term phonics. Okay, so letter C, phonics, ang ating tumpak na choice. Now what about the rest of our choices here? Vocabulary is the body of words used in particular or in a particular language. So lahat ng words na kasama sa particular language, you call that vocabulary. Fluency, meron siyang uh, maraming meaning, no, yung term na fluency. Po pwede siyang the ability to produce as many ideas as possible. If you are fluent, then you can produce so many ideas, no? And po pwede din naman siyang the ability to speak like the natives. When you say, kunwari, eh, fluent ka in English, you talk like a native, no? So, pwedeng ganun din yung maging meaning ng inyong term na fluency. Syntax, on the other hand, is the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. Okay? So, arrangement ng inyong words to form a meaningful sentence that would be called syntax, no? Syntaxis sa Filipino. But then again, we were looking for letter C, phonics, ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, we move on with question number nine. Still English. Some of our re relatives blank to visit our great grandfather in the States. Letter A has decided. Letter B have decided. Letter C have decided. Or letter D will have decided. Okay, ano kaya ang tumpak na choice? Okay, sa so mga mahihina yung internet, okay lang po. Balikan nyo po later, no? 
um, sabi ni ma'am, kailangan pa niyang umakyat sa bundok. No? So medyo may konting sacrifice para maging LPT. No? We understand, balikan lamang po ninyo. Po, pwede pong balikan, especially if you are a member of Team Peche, buo po, mababalikan niyo po yung ating video. And of course, your PowerPoint presentation will be posted later. Okay, some of our relatives blank to visit our great-grandfather in the States. Has decided, have decided, have decided, or letter D, will have decided. Ano kaya ang ating tumpak na choice? I see a lot of letter Bs, may ilang A's and C's, marami din no, A's and C's, pero mas marami letter B. Okay, so again, whenever you are uh, looking at an English no, at an English sentence, a sentence using the English language, you have to take a look at your subject and the verb. Dapat palaging may agreement yung subject and verb mo, subject-verb agreement na tinatawag. So whenever you have a subject that is singular, your verb should also be in singular form. Ganun din kapag ka-plural yung inyong subject, dapat plural form din yung inyong uh, verb. Okay, so going back to your... Example here, so our sentence here, some of our relatives, relatives of course is in plural, okay, so plural form siya. So should you use has decided, have decided, had decided, or will have decided? Okay, ang tumpak na choice of course here would be letter B, have decided, okay, so have decided. Relatives of course, again, as we've mentioned, plural siya, no? so plural and so, dapat is have yung, yung ginagamit, no? So, X itong has, because has is used for singular, singular subjects. Have decided, hindi po pwede. This is um, past perfect, no? Yung, yung tense ng verb mo dito is past perfect. You only use this if you have two past actions, okay? So, we don't have two past actions here. Isa lang, isa lang naman, no? Yung inyong pinag-uusapan, only one past action. And so, have decided will be your best bet. Indeed, then we'll have decided. We'll have decided that, again, this is future perfect. Hindi pa nangyayari, okay? So, letter B po ang ating tumpak na choice, okay? So, letter B for number nine. We move on, uh, but before that, uh, this is a comparison between your present perfect and your past tense. If you have your present perfect, you use the have or has and your participial form of the verb, no? So, parehas kanina, has decided, or have decided has will be used with singular subjects have naman will be used for your plural subjects now sa past tense mo wala pong has or have no so verb lang in past form now what's the difference between these two ang inyong present perfect your has or have plus past participle you'd use this for something that happened in the past pero meron pa rin siyang ugnay at the present no so something that happened in the past until present. It still has an effect at present. So, for example, you say he has drunk all of the milk. We need to buy some more for tomorrow. Merong kaugnayan yung past mo at yung present mo. He has waited for you for a long time. Go and meet him for one. So, again, meron pa siyang effect, no? Naghintay siya sa'yo for a long time in the past. So, now you have to meet him, okay? So, may ugnayan yung past and present. That would be your present perfect. Past tense mo naman, it has a finish time. No? So meron siyang finish time. finish time. He drank all of the milk this morning. Thus, he often went to toilet. He waited for two hours, then he left. Okay, so wala na, tapos na yun. Past action, finish time. That would be your uh, past tense. Okay, so past tense na yan. All right, so again, ang ating pong tumpak na choice for number nine is letter B, have decided. Number, oh, this this again is your had, no? Ito naman yung ating letter C, although I've already explained this a while ago. Yung had decided mo letter C, this is your past perfect. And you would use this if you have two past actions, no? So, dalawang past actions. The meeting had already started by the time I arrived. So, next start muna yung meeting and then you arrived. Both of these happened in the past, no? So, the first past action would use uh, your past perfect. And the second past action would use the simple past, okay? So, basahin ko mo lamang, no, yung um, comment ni Ma'am, ang hirap ng pangalan, Ma'am Curtis. Maraming salamat po. Dami daw lumabas dito. Last June 26, 2022, keep on sharing your knowledge, ma'am, and God bless you more. Maraming salamat for your feedback. Again, uh, as I've mentioned, no, so dito siguro Pinoy, sigurado kayo lumalabas itong ating mga items. And of course, sigurado, sigurado kayong tama yung ating mga sagot. Okay, so this is for your had plus past participle. This is your 
um, past perfect. Okay, so yung hinanap natin a while ago was present perfect using have because of course relatives is in plural form. Okay, so again, your answer would be letter B, have decided. Okay, now we move on with number 10. Okay, English pa rin ito, number 10 natin. You blank, finish your novel before the winter comes. Letter A, had. Letter B, will be. Letter C, will have. Or letter D, was. Okay, what's your choice? Ma'am Shini Ikalinos, maraming salamat for your stars. Uh, Sir Jason Nungay, thank you po for the stars. Sir Jesus Peralta, maraming salamat. Again, sa ating mga star senders, maraming maraming salamat po. Ma'am Shang Borja. Sir Julito Balde, Ma'am Hailin, thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am Elishim Nasimata, thank you po. Ma'am Ann Argado. Ma'am Apple Egas, thank you so much. Ma'am Lizelle, paduhinog siso. Maraming salamat po. Uh, sir Conrus at Batuan, doon po kayo sa Team Pesha manood, sir. Napuputol po yung nasa Facebook page natin. Ma'am Norlin Muhammad, maraming salamat po. Again, thank you so much to all our star senders. Ma'am Bemeline Dato, under, Underwood ba? Or Underworld ito, ma'am. Naputol, hindi ko makita yung lahat na kabuuan ng name ni ma'am. Ma'am Tin Tanse, thank you. Ma'am Neil Jen Verase Salgarino, thank you. Ma'am Abigail Panaga, maraming salamat. Ma'am Jilin M. Caronan Ibunya, thank you so much. Ma'am Leslie Simeni and Ma'am Fanny Rose Montalvo, maraming salamat po. All right, letter C. Karamihang sagot ninyo ay letter C. Okay. What about the rest of you? Ma'am Aprilin Erieso, maraming salamat for the stars po. Okay, now number 10. You finish your novel before the winter comes. The correct choice here, of course, would be letter C, will have. Okay, so tumpak po yung will have. This is in your future perfect tense. Now future perfect tense. Let's take a look at your explanation here. The future perfect tense is used to describe the actions that will be finished by some specific time or date in the future. Now, so sabi dito, matatapos siya at a specific time in the future. Hindi pa siya tapos ngayon, okay? but it will be done in the future at a specific time. Alam mo kung kailan matatapos in the future. Now, so you will have finished your novel before the winter comes. Your correct choice, of course, would be num uh, letter C. No? So letter C will have ang ating tumpak na choice for number 10. Okay, so future perfect tense yung ating hinahanap. Letter C is tumpak. Number 11, spiders can be distinguished from insects by the fact that spiders have letter A, uh, heart co outer covering, letter B, four pairs of legs, letter C, large abdomen, or letter D, biting mouth parts. What's the correct choice? Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for number 11? Number 11, what is our choice? 